Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem car fleet. I think a lot of people don't end up solving this problem, but I think it's a very good problem and interesting problem to solve. So we're given N cars that are traveling along the same road. It has one lane. The road has only a single lane and this is important for the rest of the problem. All the cars are traveling towards some destination, which is at some target position right and every car that we're given has a position and it has a speed associated with it and remember they're all traveling in the same direction towards the target and the position and speed are given in their own arrays so there's two separate arrays given for be for each of these and the important thing is that a car can never pass another car that's because we have one lane in the road, right? So imagine we have two cars like these, you know, this one's traveling and then this one's traveling, right? Let's say this one's traveling at 10 miles per hour and the other one is traveling 20 miles per hour. Of course, the faster one is eventually gonna catch up to the slower one, but since they're in the same road, even when they do catch up, that faster one uh, is just going to be traveling right next to the slower one, right? So the slower one was traveling at 10. Once the fast one catches up, its speed is going to be reduced to 10 because it can't pass the one that's ahead of it. So once cars are basically traveling right next to each other, that is called a car fleet. And and by the way, if these cars are right next to each other, they're basically assumed to have the same exact position. Even though technically one is behind the other one, they still are considered to have the same position. Uh, that's what they mention right here. And they also mention a car fleet is just some non-empty set of cars uh, that are basically at the same position traveling at the same speed. And by the way, even a single car can be considered a car fleet. So... And the last edge case you might be wondering is if what if a car catches up uh, right at the moment that they both arrive at the destination point? Because remember, once they arrive at the destination, they're going to stop. So what if a car catches up exactly at the destination? Well, they're considered a car fleet. And what we want to do is determine the total number of car fleets that will arrive at the destination. So, you know, in this case, for example, this example problem, we're given five cars, right? So initially we have five car fleets, but when they actually arrive at the destination, which in this case is at position 12, then they are going to be reduced down to three car fleets. Okay, so now let's try to figure out how we can actually solve this problem. Let's take a look at our own example. So here you can see I'm basically combining the two arrays that they give us. I know they give us a separate array for position and speed, but I'm just going to combine it into an array of pairs. So this pair represents, uh, you know, the first is the position, next is the speed. So this is at position three with speed three. This is at position five with speed two. This is at position seven with speed one. And our target in this case is 10. So I'm gonna actually explain this problem in a way that you might not expect because when you actually think about what these cars are, they're literally just a system of linear equations, right? We have the time on one axis uh, and we have the position on another axis, right? And if we take a single example such as this one, right? It starts at position three. So position three is over here on the chart and it has a speed of three. What does the speed mean? It means that the slope is gonna be three, right? So every unit of time that passes, it will be in th three positions ahead, right? So in one second, it'll be at position six. In two seconds, it'll be at position nine, excuse my uh, kind of bad drawing here. And then at time three, it'll be at position 12. So basically it reaches, it reaches the destination 10, right? Remember 10 is our destination. It reaches it at, let's say two point something seconds, right? And we could calculate that if we really want to pretty easily. It's just a linear equation, but I'm just drawing it out just so you kind of get an idea of what's going on here. So now let's do this one, 7, 1, and let's use a different color just to kind of illustrate things. So it starts at position 7, and it has a slope of 1. So each unit of time is just going to go up one position. So at time 3 is when it's going to uh, reach the destination, right? So we can draw a you know line like this one. 
And what you can already tell uh, from this drawing is these intersect here, right? They intersect before they reach the destination. What does that tell us? That tells us that they are going to become a car fleet. This orange one and the, the blue one, right, they intersected over here before the orange one reached uh, the destination over here. So what's actually going to happen with this orange one, this part of the drawing is, is not going to happen, right? Because once they do intersect over here, the orange one is going to travel at the same speed as the blue one because it can't pass the blue one, right? On the drawing, we showed that the orange one passed the blue one, but that's that's impossible in the context of this problem, right? So a better uh, drawing for the orange one would have been something like this. Right, like it starts at a high slope, but then it slows down. And just to finish up the drawing, so this other one, five, two, it starts at position five, it has a slope of two. So by the time it reaches the destination, it'll be at 2.5, which is about over here, I think. So let's just draw a continuous line. And even though it's kind of hard to draw a straight line here, but you can see again, these intersected as well, right? So that must mean, since all three of them intersected, that must mean that we're going to have a single car fleet, right? And that's pretty obvious when you look at a drawing. And actually, when we look closer at the drawing, we see that the orange one intersected with the green one before it intersects with the blue one. So actually, when the orange one intersects here, it's actually going to be traveling at the same rate as the uh, green one. And you can continue with this drawing if it kind of gives you a good intuition of the problem. I just wanted to kind of show you like where I'm coming from with this problem and that I'm not just immediately jumping to the solution. But knowing kind of this idea, we can uh, kind of get into the solution to this problem and we can actually do it in linear time. So now you can see that I've drawn the cars and their positions in sorted order. And that makes sense, right? Wouldn't we want to go through the cars in sorted order? Because of course we know that they can't, like the relative order of the cars is never going to change. So it makes sense to go through them in sorted order. Now for any two given cars such as these two, how do we know if they're going to intersect or, you know, they're going to collide and become a single car fleet? before they reach the destination position. Well, basically by the drawing I showed you earlier, if these two intersect each other, right? So what we could do is actually calculate the intersection point of these two if we really wanted to, but there's a slightly easier way. We can just calculate what time is this car going to reach the destination and what time is this car gonna reach the destination. If this car reaches the destination before or, or at the same time as this one, that must mean that they became a car fleet, right? They became a car fleet somewhere in the middle, somewhere in here. So since this one is moving at one mile per hour and this one is moving at two miles per hour or whatever, you know, whatever unit of speed or something that they gave us, we can calculate what time they're gonna reach the destination. We can do it pretty easily, right? We can just take the distance difference for, you know, I'm going to do the green one first. We can take 10 minus 7, right? That's the distance that we need to travel, three units of distance, and divide that by the speed, in this case, 1. So this is going to reach the destination at time equals 3. We can do the same thing for this one. So 10 minus 5 divided by 2, that's going to be 2.5. So this is going to reach the destination at time 2.5. So that must mean that they are going to collide. So we know they're going to be one car fleet. So technically we can kind of just like delete one of these, right? And just not consider it anymore. But which one of these two are we going to remove, right? Like, okay, let's say I remove one and then, you know, I start comparing the remainder of the list that's on the left side. Well, I'll tell you right now, we're always going to keep the one that comes ahead because if these collided, they're going to end up being reduced down to the speed of the one that's ahead, right? So this is going to start traveling at one instead of two, right? That's going to be the new speed. So if we want to know if these two intersect, it's going to be harder to calculate because this one is going to have two different speeds. Initially, it's going to be two, but that some portion, it's going to change to one. So it's easier if we uh, keep this one because this one is always going to be traveling at speed one. And one more thing, we're actually, we're not going to go from left to right. We're going to go from right to left when we uh, do this operation. And the reason is pretty much the same. 
Because if we started at the beginning and then we were checking, okay, do does this one collide with the blue one? Well, we don't even know what speed the blue one is going to be traveling throughout the whole thing. We can't just assume it's traveling at speed two the entire time because it could collide with somebody else and slow down. That's why it's better to start from the right and then iterate through this in reverse order. Okay, now and just to complete the example, so we know that this is gonna end up colliding with this one, so we can just assume that this car is a single car fleet. We have one more car over here and it's traveling at speed three. So now we wanna know, is this one gonna collide with this one? We already know what time this is gonna reach the destination. Let's calculate the time this is gonna reach the destination. So we can do 10 minus three, so that's seven divided by three. That's gonna be two point something, right? Let's just say two point, I think it's 2.3 or something, but it's not too important, but we know that this uh, since it has a smaller time than the one ahead of it, then they are going to collide. And remember, which one of them are we going to delete? We are going to delete this one because it's the one that's behind. Okay, so before we get into the code, just to mention the overall time complexity of this portion of the algorithm where we're actually going through the cars is big O of n. But of course, we know we actually have to sort uh, the input based on the position. So that's going to make the overall time complexity end up being n log n. Uh, and the extra space is just going to be big O of n. Uh, because we're going to be creating a separate array, but we're also going to be using a stack just to give you a preview of how we're going to be doing this. So so just to let you know, initially our stack is going to be empty. We're going to go through this in reverse order. So first car, we're going to go ahead and add it to the stack. Okay, next car, we're going to go ahead and take this and then add it to the top of the stack. But then we're going to compare this car with the other car that's adjacent to it on the stack, right? Both of these are going to be on the stack. If they collide with each other, which we can uh, calculate pretty easily, then we're going to remove the one that's on the top of the stack. Uh, this one is the one that's on the top of the stack. So this is the one we're going to pop from the stack. And that's how we're going to do the algorithm. So, you know, assuming we pop this from the stack, but then we add this one. And, and then we end up popping this one as well. What we're gonna end up returning is the number of car fleets that actually exist at the end of the entire algorithm, which we can get easily because we can just take the length of our stack and that'll tell us how many car fleets we actually have. And it's just gonna be a single one in this example problem. So now let's get into the code. Okay, now let's write the code. I love problems like these where we can spend most of our time actually explaining it and talking about it and then the code becomes easy. The first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of create an array of pairs. Uh, in Python, it's pretty easy to do. I'm just gonna iterate through both of the position and speed array simultaneously. I can do that with zip, but you can, you know, instead of using an array of pairs, you can also just uh, have like a hash map or something and then just sort the positions if you want. I'm doing it this way because it's easiest. Uh, but you can do it how you'd like. This is, I think, called list comprehension in Python. If you want to Google it, we're just creating an array of pairs. Uh, but next, we don't want to forget to actually sort that array of pairs. So uh, actually, uh, when we go ahead and iterate through that array of pairs, P, uh, position, and speed in sorted pair, and so we can iterate through this sorted, but we also want to make sure we iterate through it in reverse order in Python. That's pretty easy to do, just like this. So just to clarify, what we're doing is reverse sorted order. And we need one more uh, data structure, just our stack, which will tell us how many car fleets we have at the end. Okay, so we're going through every single car. Remember, when we get to a car, we want to know what time is it gonna reach the destination. We can get that easily just by taking target minus the position of this car and then dividing that by the speed. In Python, this is decimal division. And that's very important because we know the time could be a decimal. We don't want to make an integer. We don't want to make an integer division by adding two slashes. So we're going to take this time and we're going to go ahead and append it to our stack. And once we've appended it to our stack, whoops, there's a little typo. Uh, we want to know does it overlap with the other one at the top of our stack. So first, we want to make sure that our stack has at least two elements in it because if it just has one element, just one car, then we don't really need to do anything. Um, but if it has at least two cars, it could be possible that we have a collision. So if the the time that the top of our stack at index negative one, that's how you can get to the top of the stack in Python, if it reaches the destination before the one that's ahead of it at index negative two, like if the time of it is less than the next one, that must mean they collide, that must mean we have to pop from the top of the stack. 
And by doing that, we're decreasing the number of car fleets. If we don't pop, then we leave it as it is. And in case I didn't explain this earlier, you might be wondering why is this an if statement rather than a while loop? And let me explain that for a second. Suppose that this is our stack, right? We have three elements. So, and, and we get to this one, right? And we find that, okay, this collides with this one, right? So then what are we gonna do? We're just gonna pop this from our stack, right? But then you might be thinking, okay, well, what if this one collides with this one, right? Then we have to also remove this one, don't we? But you're, you might be forgetting that we already probably check that condition because we're traversing this in reverse order, right? Before we even get to this car over here, we're gonna check, okay, does this collide with anybody? Nope, okay, does this collide with this guy? Nope, and then we get to this one and we find, yes, this one actually does collide with this guy, but that's okay because just because it collides with this, it'll never collide with the next one because once it does collide with the blue one, these two will be traveling at the same speed and we determine that this won't collide with that, so it's impossible for this to collide with this one. So that's why we're doing it this way. And that's actually all we have to do. After we're done with that, we can just go ahead and return the length of the stack and let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, it does work and it's relatively efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel if you would like, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.